Today, East Media looks into how BCSC is honoring Lily Streetville and making changes to transportation safety. We take a look at the Cummins Recycling Day and its impact on the community. We talk to our senior homecoming court to see how they're feeling on their big day. All that and more on Torch TV. Good morning and welcome back to the Columbus East Media Studios and in this edition of Torch TV. I'm your host, Abby Jones, and alongside me today is Caleb Nolman. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing today, I'm Abby? doing good. That's okay. great. All right. We start today with news that impacts our East community. A jury found, recently found that Shiam Submaranium guilty of causing the death of Junior Lily Strevel. The jury deliberated over six hours before returning a guilty verdict on leaving the scene of an accident resulting in death and passing a bus stop, stop arm causing death. Submaranian was taken into custody and awaits sentencing on October 27th. We will update you when the sentence is handed down. As a result of last year's tragic accident and loss of life, BCSE has enacted new transportation safety measures to ensure an incident to that degree doesn't happen to any other student. Our very own Emma Burns joins us in the studio with more. The entire fleet of buses in the BCSE Transportation Department have been fitted with stop arm cameras and video system upgrades. The total cost? Nearly $300,000. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down, because once you do something, you can't take it back. With the terrible situation last year with Lily, um, we, we did continue to take a look at things. After the tragedy that happened last year, BCSE realized they needed to take some more serious action to ensure children's safety. Lily Strevel helped push the community to make these happen sooner rather than later. The accident that occurred last year uh, was very unfortunate, uh, but it also helped speed up processes that we started this year, BCSE, um, working with the prosecutor's office here in Bartholomew County. It is very important to be paying attention when driving by a school bus, so BCSC has created some more ways of catching people when they break the law. But hopefully with enforcement of those who violate the stop arm being out and run through it, that that can slow down or reduce the number of times that happens and therefore reduce the number of times we'll have something happen to one of our kids. There's a lot of distractions, as we all well know, with driving these days. Uh, so it's, it just kind of brought to light that this stuff doesn't just happen everywhere else but here. Bartholomew County has worked hard on making sure they have good people behind the wheel and keeping safety as most important. Good school transportation companies put the safety of kids first and that's what BCSE has done. We are very thorough on our uh, training. We have three of us back there now. But we, we take pride in training our drivers and we have uh, things in place that the drivers do every time they pick up kids. BCSE's biggest focus is to care about each individual child and that won't stop anytime soon. We hope our community can continue to care and be safe when driving. My biggest focus is to get more people on the road that is qualified um, and safe. But our priority is safety. So regardless of what we do, it starts with safety. It starts with getting kids here safely, getting them back home safely, and during, during the day having a, the situations that are as safe as possible. So we take great pride in transporting our kids safely to and from school every day. Prosecutor's office has begun stepping up efforts to, cha to charge drivers who run through the school bus stop arm. Hopefully these new changes can prevent future tragedies and keep our students safe. East's 50th homecoming is today at East's own Stafford Field. The gates will open at 5.30. With your East student ID, you can get into the game for $1. They'll have $5 JT's barbecue dinner, Q-Mix radio, spike ball, cornhole, a teacher dunk tank, free prizes, and a color run, and more. Today is the last day to sign up for the PSAT. 
The PSAT is for sophomores and juniors only and will be taking place on October 25th. Sign-ups are in the bookstore. You will need $2 and your student ID to sign up. Cummins is one of the largest corporations in Bartholomew County. They give back to the community in many ways. They provide internships to students, sponsor local programs, and most recently, Cummins had their recycling day. After a three-year break due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Cummins brought back their recycling day. This program allows any member of the community to bring in old TVs, car tires, and other typically hard to dispose of items and get rid of them in a safe manner. This is a, one of the first events you could volunteer if you're a new employee to the state of Indiana. And if you see the events, you make relations, knowing with someone you might know, like a volunteer, and this is the best way to give back to others in the community. Many community members give up their time in order to help with the event. Volunteers range in age from students to Cummins employees, proving it truly takes a team to pull off an event of this scale. East National Honor Society was one of the groups that helped serve the event. Over 40 members gave up part of or their entire school day in order to volunteer for the community. This is Cummins Recycling Day, and it's been gone for a few years, mostly due to COVID, so this is the first day it's back. It's important, obviously, for the recycling component, but uh, most of the kids out here from East are in NHS, and they do uh, service hours each semester, 20 service hours. And so they're getting to not just give, give back to the community, but they're also uh, learning about the importance of consumption and overuse of things and recycling. And we've had things from some students taking water to some other volunteers. We've had students unlo unloading electronics, unloading paint, batteries, and, that, and it can be kind of directing to where that stuff goes. So just helping out. One of the other main attractions of Recycling Day is the disposal of liquids such as paint and car oils. It helps to get rid of like recyclables that you can't get rid of like at normal recycling centers like tires and paint and there are more recyclables than just paper and plastic. These substances can be so hard to get rid of that people end up just dumping them illegally and polluting the environment. By providing a free service, Cummins helps to keep the city cleaner and safer for both people and wildlife. Cummins is planning on continuing this event in the years to come. But in the meantime, make sure to be conscious of the environment when you're disposing of waste. And always check if you can recycle. After the break, we explore how students and staff feel about new changes in the dress code. We look back on East's first spike ball tournament and how it was brought to life. And we reflect on our recent competition results and what's coming up this weekend. All that and more on Torch TV. The Columbus East Counseling Center has many resources for students to utilize. Every student has a counselor based on their last name to help them with their needs, whether it be emotional or academic. For our last names A through F, you have Mr. Hansen. For last names G through M, you have Ms. Wagner. For last names M through S, you have Ms. Henson. For last names T through Z, you have Mrs. Beck. If you need to talk to your counselor, simply go during your resource and sign in on the sheet for your counselor and wait. Whether you have schedule changes or need support, remember, the Counseling Center is for you. Let's review how to be a respectful and safe driver in our student parking lot. Watch out for pedestrians who are walking in the road. Park within the yellow line. Play music at an appropriate volume. Dispose of your trash properly in the bins put around the parking lot. Thank you for making our parking lots a safer and cleaner place. This year, the staff at East have been cracking down on the dress code. However, the student body has some differing opinions on the matter. Kate Roeder joins us with more. Over the past few years, East has been pretty relaxed with the dress code. But this year, new changes have come into effect. But what does this really mean? Let's talk dress code. This year, it seems like the administration is being more strict with what is allowed and what is not. The dress code states, school dress should be modest, safe, and appropriate. Some clothing considered fashionable may be inappropriate in a public school setting. Students must wear clothing, including a shirt with pants or a skirt, or the equivalent, and shoes. Clothing must have fabric on all sides, front and back. The students who are not following these guidelines will of course be dress coded. I talked with a student who repeatedly got dress coded for the things that she wore. She tells us about the dress coding process. The process isn't very structured. They would just come up and say, hey, do you have a jacket? Put it on. But then if you would start walking around in front of other teachers without that jacket on, 
they don't know and they don't care. Some students think that the dress code is not being enforced in school. I talked with Mrs. Boone, one of the deans here at East. She said, all teachers are encouraged to keep students accountable for the student handbook. This means that all teachers should be administering the same rules that the policy states. Although some teachers don't feel comfortable telling a student they can't wear something. One teacher says, I have definitely talked to students about what they're wearing and I try not to embarrass them. I usually pull them aside in class so they aren't singled out in front of everybody. Crop tops are in style and there's a social barrier sometimes to have to wear that. A tighter fitting shirt might not be a choice to wear. That might be the only clothes a student has. Some students don't have access to clothes that fit them. So I think that we should be careful when telling students what they can and cannot wear. The fashion like trends recently are like short shorts, crop tops, like ripped jeans. If they're going to enforce the dress code so strictly, I think it should follow what is available. One student we talked to said, I think the dress code is generally fine, but I think that it singles out girls. In the presentation we were given, I didn't hear a single thing about what the guys wear. I just feel like I'm being pressured to wear conservative clothes. I don't like our dress code because I think it's biased around boys and girls because I've never seen one of my male friends get dress coded and all of my female friends have been dress coded for things that I don't think are inappropriate at all. With everything taken into consideration, over the next few years we might see some changes in the dress code at East. What changes do you think could be implemented within, within the next few years? I just hope that all teachers can be on board with dress coding students. Currently, every teacher goes about it differently. Thanks, Abby. Now back to you guys with some more announcements. The Columbus Lacrosse Club is hosting several Tri Lacrosse events on October 3rd and October 5th from 6 to 7 p.m. at Central Middle School. Participants will be taught fundamental skills of the game, including catching, passing, shooting, scooping, and ball handling. Equipment will be provided. Picture retakes will be next Tuesday, October 4th. Make sure to get your picture taken if you miss picture day or you dislike your current picture. The first ever Columbus East Spikeball Tournament took place a few weeks ago on Friday, September 16th. The tournament, which was created by a student assembly, followed 12 teams of two competing against each other in a game of spikeball to be the final champions. Prizes were awarded to the top three teams. In the end, the winners were Alex Duncan and Jake Gilbert, and they went home with Starbucks gift cards. East Student Assembly chose to host this tournament because of a gap that was present in their year schedule, and they wanted to do a school-wide activity before homecoming. Congrats to the winning team of the first East Spikeball Tournament. Now to Camille, who's joined by the homecoming court in recent competitions. Yesterday, our boys' tennis team advanced to their sectional final win over Hauser 3-2. Our girls' volleyball team took the win over our crosstown rivals, Columbus North. This Saturday, our marching band, the Sound and Spear of Columbus, is competing in the Bands of America Louisville Regional Competition at 12:15. Tonight is our homecoming game against Bean North. Come out and support your East football team with the theme, White Out slash White Lies. Speaking of homecoming, here's our very own senior homecoming court. So I'm gonna ask you, Heidi, what are you looking forward to tonight? Um, I'm looking forward to the traditional color toss, but also like getting to do some of the new things with the alumni. Are there some fun new activities that will be happening? Uh, yes, this year there's gonna be a dunk tank and the DJ and lots of food. Okay, so how does it feel to be East 50th senior homecoming court? Um, it's actually really special, I feel like, um, with all the alumni coming back, it's just going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well thank you guys for coming. Now let's take a quick look at what's ahead on the next Torch TV. I think is, is huge. I think it means everything. Pride is important um, to show the community and to show the people who are here that they're not alone. Giving people this kind of platform is what this community needs, honestly. That's all we have for today. From Caleb, Emma, Kate, and the rest of the Torch TV crew, I'm Abby Jones, and thanks for watching Torch TV. Remember to take care of yourself, others, and the place. And as always, try to be the best part of someone's day.